Good evening. Welcome to the deliberative session of our special town meeting. I uh, want to uh, welcome you. Thank you for uh, coming out this evening. I want to acknowledge that the warrant for this special town meeting has been properly posted according to law. And at this time, I'd like to ask all of you to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'd like to ask Mr. Bridal if he would lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. My name is Bob Casaza. I'll serve as the moderator of our deliberative session this evening. I'd like to recognize uh, some of the uh, town officials who uh, may uh, participate in our proceedings this evening. Uh, with me uh, at the... Uh, Bobby, we can't hear. Okay. Nobody can hear back here. Right. Is that with the air conditioning? This, this air conditioning was never a problem in February. Yeah. Never a problem. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we, it, it should cycle off. You may miss some of these introductions of our dignitaries, but uh, hopefully um, we'll have it all put together by the time we get to our, our business. Uh, with me at the table, um, on my left, your right, uh, our finance director, Christy Pulliam. Uh, to my immediate left, our town clerk, Jane Seifer. To my immediate right, our deputy public works director, Jennifer Hale. Uh, next to Ms. Hale is our town manager, Fred Welch, and our town attorney, uh, Mark Gerald. At the front of the room are our Board of Selectmen, Rusty Bridal, Regina Barnes, Rick Griffin, Mary Louise Woolsey, and James Waddell. Uh, also um, upstairs, uh, hopefully you have uh, checked in with our supervisors of the checklist, Arlene Andriozzi, Janine St. Germain, and Nancy Stiles. Uh, like our um, annual town meeting, you will need to have checked in. Uh, and got and received a voter card in the event that we have any votes this evening. Assisting the moderator this evening is Pat Bushway as assistant moderator. Uh, tonight's session is to uh, explain, discuss, and debate and possibly amend the single article that's set forth in the special town meeting warrant. Our ability to amend is restricted by our usual and customary restrictions. We can't eliminate that warrant article and we can't add any new purposes <laughs> to that warrant article and the purpose of the appropriation cannot be changed uh, and we can't eliminate uh, the subject matter. In addition, we're restricted by the language that uh, brought us here, the special legislation that was uh, approved by the, the legislature which authorized this uh, special town meeting and which uh, declared that the town of Hampton is hereby authorized to hold a special town meeting for the sole purpose of authorizing the issuance of the bonds and notes necessary to pay for the temporary and permanent replacement of both said force main sewer lines that are each over 28 years old and to pay for the decommissioning of said lines. So that's the scope of our authority this evening. At this time, in order to assist us uh, with that matter of business, I would uh, entertain a motion to allow non-resident staff of the town of Hampton to speak during this meeting to answer questions and to provide information regarding this warrant article, specifically the following individuals. Our town manager, Fred Welch, our town attorney, Mark Gerald, our finance director, Christy Pulliam, and our public works director, Chris Jacobs. Is there a motion? Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Griffin. All those in favor of allowing those individuals to speak, raise your hands, down hands. Any opposed? That motion has passed and those non-residents will be allowed to speak on that subject matter. And I want to get right to that um, article, Article 1. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $4,937,868 for the purpose of constructing a temporary force main and two new permanent force main pipes, which are the necessary upgrades needed to replace the two existing old wastewater force mains between the Church Street sewer pumping station and the wastewater treatment plant? 
The older of these two force mains is made of asbestos concrete and was installed in 1969. The other force main is made of duct iron and was installed in 1987. The ductile pipe failed in 2016, in early 2018, and again in June of 2018. Following the second failure, the failed force main was subjected to expert testing. The testing found that the force main was no longer suitable for operations as a force main and had the potential for catastrophic failure at any time. To adequately handle the wastewater flow from Hampton Beach without backups into the pump station or overtopping of sewage during summer high tide events and or storm events, it is necessary to have two working force mains. Due to the failure of the ductile iron force main pipe in June of 2018, the town had only one working force main between the Church Street pumping station and the wastewater treatment plant. The installation of the temporary force main pipe has provided the second pipe that is needed until the, new, until the two new force main pipes can be constructed. The two new force mains will be constructed alongside New Hampshire Route 101 from the Church Street sewer pumping station to the wastewater treatment plant via Tide Mill Road. The new force main construction will include the construction of a new utility bridge, to be built adjacent to New Hampshire Route 101 bridge and will connect to the wastewater treatment plant through an easement already secured by the town of Hampton over the property of the St. James Building Association to Tide Mill Road and then through a new gravity sewer along Tide Mill Road. Once the new force main pipes are connected, the old force mains located within the Tide Mill Creek Marsh will be flushed, filled with water, and capped, thereby terminating their usage. In addition, the temporary force main will be removed. The project costs include the rental, installation, and removal of the temporary force main, the construction associated with the two new force mains, including the utility bridge, maintenance structures, valves, pavement and, and, and surface repair, the construction associated with the Tide Mill Road gravity sewer, the cleaning and capping of the two old force mains running under the marsh, the charges for bond council to obtain the required opinion for the bonding, the engineering and inspection services for the project, and all other items incidental to the whole construction. Such sum to be raised by the issuance of municipal bonds or notes for a period not to exceed 30 years under and in accordance with the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33 and to authorize the Board of Selectmen and the Town Treasurer to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine that rate of interest thereon in accordance with the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, contract for, accept, and expend any federal, state, or other available funds towards the project in accordance with the terms <coughs> and conditions under which they are received and to borrow in anticipation of the receipt of such funds and or the issuance of such bonds or notes as provided in the Municipal Finance Act, and to authorize participation in the State Revolving Fund, SRF, which is at RSA 486-14, established for the purpose, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and expend monies as they become available from the federal and state governments, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to implement such cost-effective solutions as are presented in the future that they deem to be in the best interest of the town that may result in a lesser amount of expenditure than is authorized by this warrant article and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any and all actions necessary to carry out the project in the best interest of the Town of Hampton. Three-fifths vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5-0. Recommended by the Budget Committee, 8-0. The fiscal impact note from the Finance Department. Since the above bond would not be issued until 2019, <coughs> the first estimated principal interest payment of $348,258 will not occur until late 2019. The estimated 2019 tax rate impact uh, is 9.7 cents per thousand dollars of valuation. The total of the bond's principal and interest payments over a 20-year period at an interest rate of 2.424% are estimated to be $5,884,921. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 1? Moved by Mr. Griffin. Is there a second? 
seconded by Ms. Woolsey. Uh, who would like to speak first to article number one? I'd like to move, I would like to amend article one to change the total dollars to be authorized from four million nine three seven eight six eight to four million nine nine six eight five zero. This is an increase of five uh, fifty eight thousand nine hundred eighty two dollars to match the authorized sum by the state. So Mr. Bridal has made a motion to amend. Is there a second? Ms. Barnes has seconded Mr. Bridal's motion to uh, increase the amount of the article by $58,982. Would Mr. Bridal would like to speak to the I'll amendment? To the Mr. Welch. Mr. Uh, moderator, uh, we're seeking to amend this article so the sum uh, authorized by the state will be equal by the sum authorized by the town meeting under this warrant. Uh, we're going to be using SRF funding, and the purpose of SRF funding is we only pay what we actually use. But that 58,000 some odd dollars, if we actually use that and it's not authorized in this, in this particular motion, then we'll come out of the general fund and out of the town's taxes for that particular year as opposed to be part of the bond issue. We thought that was a little unnecessary, and uh, since we're going to use state funds for this, and the interest rate is so low, we wanted to amend to, to put the two sums together as an equal amount. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Ms. Woolsey, on the amendment. Mr. Moderator, uh, I'm assuming the fiscal impact figure will change with the increase in the principal. I, has the finance officer a, uh, an updated figure? All right, Ms. Uh, Pulliam, the uh, question is with, uh, if you assume that goes to 4996850, what does that do to the, uh, the impact that I, that I read just a moment ago? It changes it to 9.8 cents per thousand dollars. The first principal interest payment would be $352,418 for total principal interest at a 20 year with SRF at 2.424 would be 5 million. $955,216. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard on the bridal amendment? Mr. Jones. I understand the town manager is saying that the actual cost uh, that we experience for this work will be the actual loan amount, is that correct? Mr. Welch? Yes, sir, it is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone else wishing to be heard on the bridal amendment? Seeing none, I'm going to ask for a hand vote on the bridal amendment. If you are in favor of the bridal amendment, raise your voter card. This is to increase the amount by 58,982. Down cards. Any opposed? I declare that the bridal amendment has passed. So we are now on our main motion dealing with a figure of $4,996,850. I know that the uh, uh, Deputy Public Works Director has uh, information for us uh, about this article as amended, and so I recognize Ms. Hale. Thank you. Uh, as many of you know, uh, we have uh, been here before. We've done a presentation uh, to talk about the Church Street Pump Station force mains uh, for anybody who is just um, getting the opportunity to get familiar with the project itself. The Church Street force mains basically take all the sewage from the Hampton Beach and Sun Valley area. Uh, this is all the Letter Streets, all of Ocean Boulevard, Ashworth, and then the other side of the bridge. Those two force mains are required to handle those flows uh, much uh, as the moderator said in reading the actual <coughs> warrant, the flows, the high tides, it takes two pipes to get the flow from the Church Street pump station through those pipes which run under the marsh over to the wastewater treatment plant. Basically what you're seeing here on the screen are the two lines going from the station under the marsh. There are tidal creeks that it must cross uh, to get there. As uh, you may have heard, there are two different materials. There's the asbestos concrete line and there's the ductile iron line. Both of them are 14 inches in diameter and it is the ductile iron line that we now have had three breaks on. 
obviously this is a critical concern for the town of Hampton. Uh, there's no other way to say it, but when you have days like today, or even this picture that is, you know, back from August 2015, we have many, many residents and tourists that are here that use this part of town. That from the restaurants to the waste to our toilets, um, all need to come over to the wastewater treatment plant to have that waste treated. Without those two pipes during these high, high flows, the water can't, wastewater cannot get there. What happens if we don't replace the pipes? That's really what this is about. Um, we're unable to handle the flows. We have Hampton Beach restrictions. We, we'd need to do something. We would not be able to operate like we do today, especially during a storm, a high tide event, and a, um, all the people and tourists that are here. Uh, the breaks have uh, natural resource implications. The shell fishing uh, gets closed down. We have a loss of revenue to both the town and to the state if these pipes are not working. Let's not forget about uh, what makes this place great, and it is all the businesses and people here that come to the ocean, that come and experience this coastal community. Uh, it took us a long time to get here. We've done a lot of improvements down there. Um, we shut that down. It takes us that much longer to get back. And as some of you may recall, the numbers that you're seeing here for the new force mains, uh, they've increased since the last time this Warren article was before the public. Real quick background, back in February, March 2016, this was our first break. Our department, along with our consultants, spent a lot of time looking through all the different alternatives and the issues that we had uh, trying to do a repair. Uh, we have the access concerns, you have the tidal river crossings. We needed to get equipment, equipment that was capable of digging eight feet down uh, through wetland area. We have the whole environmental sensitivity component. Uh, this is a uh, habitat for many animals and again the shellfish industry is right on the other side of the bridge. We talked then in, about a temporary force main uh, and repair and we went with the repair hoping that it would work. Well, that first repair cost us $170,000. In March of 2017, the article went out before the voters and it did not pass. It had a cost of $4.242 million at that time. And although it was the majority of people who voted yes for the project, it wasn't the three-fifths that was needed. Unfortunately, in March, April of this year, we had our second failure. Uh, being the quasi-experts we thought we were, we did the same thing all over again. We rented the equipment, we rented the special mats, we had the same contractors come in, we were able to locate the break, we repaired it once again. Costs were slightly cheaper because I did not have two crossings. We only had one tidal crossing this time. The pipe was repaired and it was put back into service. In June 2018, we had a third failure. It was at that time that we chose not to make the repair and knew we had to look at our other options. That's what gets us here today. Right now, we are asking the voters to approve a warrant article so that we can have uh, the two new force mains that will provide us the maintenance, the access, the uh, availability to get them out of the marsh and the conditions that the marsh uh, provides. These are just illustrations of what we're dealing with. These are failures that are happening with sewage coming to the surface in the marsh. The first pipe, uh, there appeared to be um, a, a rock adjacent to it. The second pipe, brittle and falling apart. The second failure, excuse me. When we went to what do we do once we had the third failure, uh, we had already had agreements in place with DES. We've been testing them. We've been pressure testing the pipes. That's how we found these failures. If the pipe doesn't hold pressure, there's got to be a leak somewhere. Uh, it was that testing that indicated we had that third failure and we had to take that force main offline and that's what got us to the emergency plan. We had one in place and the emergency plan is to put in and as we have done a temporary force main. This temporary force main in, uh, required that we install the valve at the Church Street Pump Station so that we could divert flows away from the pipe that is no longer in service and uh, send it down to the temporary pipe that in, you can now see along 101. It was over 4,700 feet of 18-inch SDR pipe. It had fittings. 
It was all fused together. We had special bridge hangers made. DOT uh, provided us permission to hang it off the side of the bridge, something that we will not be able to do under uh, the proposed plan, which is why there is a proposed utility bridge as part of this Warren article. And we got ourselves connected all the way from the Church Street pump station down 101 across the uh, Mason property with an easement to the gravity line that is, uh, exists on Tide Mill Road. The new construction is going to follow the 101 path. This is the same path that our new pipes will follow. It will come out of the pump station, go down 101. It will then cross over the Mason property, and then we will construct a new gravity sewer line on Tide Mill Road. The purpose of that new sewer line is because the old one on Tide Mill Road is uh, clay and of large diameter. We already have the easements in place, and all the permits have been obtained. We have a use and occupancy agreement from the state of New Hampshire. We have wetland permits, Army Corps permits, and U.S. Coast Guard permits. We are ready to go and get this new pipe installed. Here's your comparison in costs and why we have an increase. The 2017 warrant amount was the $4.242 million. That was the average cost of construction and everything that goes with it. This is the engineering, this is the inspections, this is um, the fees, all the, the components of a whole project, not just the contractor's price. 2018 warrant amount is 4996850. Uh, we did have a lowest bid of 3.945. This project has been put out bid, and we are waiting till after this special meeting uh, to determine if we can award the new contract. Why do we have the price increase well the temporary pipe uh, pipeline had to be installed that was an approximate cost of about two hundred thousand dollars and we've had inflation since March of 2017 at about six point seven five percent we've had additional permit requirements put in since 2017 that require a, a greater need in some of our construction techniques and also the bidding climate has changed With that said, it's just, it's, we are here. The time is now. Uh, the two force mains do need to be replaced. Thank you, Ms. Hale. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 1 as amended? Yes, Mr. Warburton. Just a quick question. Mr. Moderator, <laughs> thank you. And uh, through the town manager, on the second page, halfway down where it says, such sum to be raised by the issuance of municipal bonds or notes for a period not to exceed 30 years. Shouldn't that be 20, Fred? Uh, Mr. Welch, uh, Mr. Warburton has raised a question that I uh, mentioned earlier at the distinction between 30 and 20. Can you provide uh, Mr. Warburton with the town's response? I can, Mr. Moderator. It says a period not to exceed 30 years. So it can be anything up to 30. Okay, even though in the last part we, we had talked to the budget committee that we're going to do the SRF, which would be 20 years. That is correct. I just didn't want to confuse. So legally we're fine to leave it the way it is? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warburton. Anyone else wishing to be heard on uh, Article 1? Mr. Jones. As I understand it, the fiscal impact statement is not legally binding, right? But the text is the 30 years binding, the 20 years not. So the fiscal impact note is not something that's subject to amendment. It's uh, right. not binding either, right? Right. Educational yeah. purposes. Yeah. Hopefully educational purposes. Yeah. Um, the fiscal impact statement, Christy, it's, it makes reference to 2019. I understand that that's the actual impact every year going forward, correct? That's the fiscal impact every year going forward for the purported 20-year period. The not just 2019. Right, but the interest will go down, so the payments go down. Won't the principal go up while the interest goes down? Interest, the principal, uh, the calculation that I did for the 20 year, the principal stays level and the interest goes down. Oh, really? Okay. That's how the bonds. So you're saying the fiscal bonds. impact in 2020 will be slightly less than 2019? Yes. Ooh, I mean, good. it depends on those other factors. Like the evaluation, town evaluation, well, that's what the calculation is. This is a per thousand time. estimate, so it doesn't, right. doesn't affect evaluations, right? Oh, except for the whole town wide right. evaluation. That's how it, you get right? a tax okay, rate right, right. So, right now, we're looking at what essentially comes down to 
nine dollars and eighty cents per one hundred thousand dollar house, or a whopping thirty nine dollars and twenty cents for an average four hundred thousand dollar house. A three hundred thousand dollar house is less than thirty bucks a year, and going down per year. This is probably one of the most important Warren articles we've ever considered in this town. And certainly in the last 20 years, in my opinion. It affects not just businesses, not just our visitors, but it affects your health. I mean, before modern sewage treatment occurred, there was serious, constant spreading of disease. We need to maintain our modern sewer system. Otherwise, we're going to have a revisiting of those ancient diseases that we're so happy to be rid of and oftentimes take for, take, take, uh, take for granted that we don't have to deal with. So I urge everyone to vote for this. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, yes, sir. Excuse me. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'd just like to say first I'm in favor of this. I was the first time it came around. There's no reason that I can think of why it's not in the town's best interest to uh, pass this warrant article. But I have a question also, and that is, what happens if the voters decide not to approve this warrant article? And I'm going to ask you to hold the question, because I know the town clerk is going to want me to say, you've got to identify yourself for the record, although I know you and many in this room know you. I'm sorry, I'm Jay Diener, 206 Woodland Road in Hampton. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hale, do you want to ask, uh, answer Mr. Diener's question? Um, much like everything else, I can't guarantee you what will happen. Uh, but I can tell you we've had multiple discussions uh, with staff. We've had discussions with our management. We've had discussions with the state and every permitting agent that's in there. And everybody realizes the importance of this sewer main. So if this does not pass, uh, we're, we're going to have some serious harder questions to answer. Are there any state mandates that we have to deal with the use from and a occupancy, time perspective? The use and, occupancy, use and occupancy agreement with DOT um, has authorized the temporary pipe with the understanding that new pipes would be put in. We will be forced to relook at that if this warrant article does not get passed. How long will that temporary pipe function? We suspect? intend to have this temporary pipe in until the end of construction. And we're looking at that uh, prior to summer season of next year. Okay. I'd like to see it going by then. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Deaner. Uh, I'm going to get Mr. Tilton in the back since um, I know you spoke in the amendment, but I'm going to get <coughs> him to come to the podium. Peter Tilton, Jr., 125 Landing Road. Um, just three factual questions. What is the diameter going to be of the new pipes? Yeah. The new pipes are 16 inches in diameter. Okay. The utility bridge, will that extend any lower than the current highway bridge as an impediment to navigation? It will not. Okay. And what is the annual cost of just renting that temporary pipe if we don't do anything, approximately? It is approximately, I want to say, $11,000 a month to rent. Oh, so, like so that's the $200,000 is our install cost, yeah. our renting cost for a year, and our removal cost. Okay. Um, I live next to the marsh. I don't have town sewer. I am for this. I, I think Rusty will have sewer before I have sewer. I probably will never get sewer, and I'm right next to the marsh. But just, just because you don't have access to something doesn't mean you shouldn't be for it. So Thank I'm you, for it. Thank you, Mr. Tilton. Ms. Wolsey? And Mr. Preston, do you want to be heard after Ms. Okay. Mary Louise Wolsey, 148 Little River. Um, just if Mrs. Hale could give a brief uh, explanation to the viewers who haven't been following this every step of the way, the difference in the new pipe that you will be using as opposed to the old rotten ductile pipe. The difference is we'll be using the fused plastic products, uh, not in a marsh environment. They will be in soils. Currently, like I said, you have a ductile iron pipe and an asbestos concrete pipe. That is not standard sewer construction 
uh, piping of today. So the new piping will be all the fused uh, plastic pipe uh, that is standard in the industry. Thank you, Ms. Hale. Mr. Preston? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charlie Preston, 47 Glade Path, Hampton. Uh, the way I see this, we don't have a choice, you know. But I would like to know if I could ask the manager through the chair. Does the Board of Selectmen have the authority to institute a sewer discharge fee without a vote for the town without a vote of the town? That's an excellent question, Mr. Moderator. And I, I believe to some extent that they do. They are the Board of Sewer Commissioners. And we have accepted the statute, which makes them eligible to establish rates. Thank you very much. Um, just for some information people might want to look up, in the Hampton Union, Friday, July 20th, 2018, selectmen differ over water sewer rate hikes. And this is uh, our neighbors to the south where Manager Welch was prior to here. And it was written by Angeline, and excuse me if I don't get it right, Jeremida. But she goes on to say that uh, the need to raise water and sewer rates became prominent after two studies showed fees paid by water and sewer users failed to cover the cost of operating departments. In 2017, about 2.2 million of taxpayer dollars went to subsidize both departments. That equal, equaled roughly 10% of the town's annual $22 million budget. The June study was done by David Fox that found all, although it takes 1.6 and change to run the water department, water rates cover only 858,000, leaving taxpayers to pick up 750,000. The sewer department's deficit is even more extreme. Fox said user fees amount to only 550,000 towards the 1.641. So, this, you know, this, it's something I'm, I'm glad to hear that the selectmen do have the authority to do and it's something to consider, but as far as getting there, we don't have a choice on this. Thank you very much, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Preston. Uh, anyone else wishing to be heard? Mr. Nyan? Good evening, uh, Mr. Moderator and others. Um, my name is John Nyan, too well not have, here in Hampton. Uh, tonight I uh, represent the uh, Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. I just would uh, like to uh, say for the record that uh, the Chamber of Commerce is in full support of this Article 1. Uh, we have over 100 members of the chamber. A uh, little over 25% of our membership has businesses down at the beach. And this would be a devastating blow to them. Um, I, I congratulate the Public Works uh, Group and, and town management for uh, really taking uh, this issue seriously. Um, one of the things that uh, Jen mentioned uh, there'd be a loss of revenue for both the town and the state. And I would like to add to that statement, um, a loss of revenue to our business community down there. There's a lot of small businesses, uh, ma and, and, and dad types of businesses, that uh, look at a seven, eight, ten week bi business uh, time frame to, to make a living. And uh, for this not to be done uh, would be devastating uh, to them. Um, and to all of our businesses. Uh, so I um, would like to just go on record to say that uh, the Chamber of Commerce does support Article 1. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nyan. Mr. Cushing? <coughs> Rennie Cushing, 395 Winnicott Road. I support this. It's really important. Um, and I voted for it before. It does strike me, though, that the warrant article includes, appropriately, um, an authorization for the town to obtain state and federal funds to assist that. And, and my memory is that when those pipes were first installed, was it a 75 federal, 20 percent state, and 5 percent local match? You know, this is about our infra you know, infrastructure, and what it is is, unfortunately, the only way that we have to capture revenue here in the town of Hampton is through the property tax. And what I see this doing is, in effect, our property taxpayers are subsidizing a basic in, uh, infrastructure that goes to support um, the well-being of the entire state. Um, and it, it's not fair. That having been said, we had no other choice. But I would hope that we would find a way to 
reinvigorate, rein, um, reinvigorate federal and state funding for these basic infrastructure problems. It's not sustainable just to put it on the back of the property taxpayers. Thank you, Mr. Cushing. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, Article 1 will appear on the ballot as amended uh, by the bridal amendment earlier this evening. This is a special um, process that we're engaged in. It required resort to the legislature in Concord in order to authorize this meeting this evening and our election, which is scheduled for Friday, August 24th, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Marston School. As Ms. Hale uh, mentioned in her presentation, uh, the last time this article was before the voters was in 2017, and it secured 57% of the vote. Uh, it, re it needs 60% to pass. Uh, so we hope to see um, many, many voters uh, in the Marston Gymnasium on Friday, August 24th, from 7 a.m. <laughs> to 8 p.m. to vote. Um, just on this single article. So, uh, Mr. Cushing. Yes, but when will absentee ballots be available for this article? Hopefully by, by the end of the week. So the town clerk, in response to Mr. Cushing's question about absentee ballot, um, <coughs> anticipates that they'll be available at the town office at the end of this week, correct? All right. Uh, seeing uh, no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Griffin. We stand adjourned, and we will um, see everyone August 24th uh, at the Marcin Gymnasium. Mr. Moderator, the, uh, the selectmen had simultaneously noticed a meeting for this time, and so they have been actually in session at the quorum. And, uh, the, the, the chairman now, I think, uh, would take the chair. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nicely done. Thank you. Unfortunately, practice makes perfect. Right? <laughs>